hi and welcome to the third episode in the Dimecast series on Castle Windsor and IOC. In the first two episodes we looked at how you can refactor your code to decouple it and using dependency injection. And then we also looked at how to create a wrapper to abstract away the class that or the objects that we were using for resolving and in our case how we were resolving using Castle Windsor. As a result we ended up with this class of resolve type of. In this case we're saying resolve type of I invoice service so we're asking the container to give us an I invoice service a new implementation of an object that implements I invoice service. To do that it's going to Castle Windsor and Castle Windsor needs to be loaded with the configuration to know when I ask for this object give me this and doing that we're initializing our resolve type initialize we're saying give it a new Windsor container and new Windsor container is initialized itself in the constructor with a new XML interpreter that new XML interpreter actually says go ahead and look at the app or web config for this application and load up whatever configurations are inside of it for Castle Windsor in our case we're using app config and for us to do this we need to do one thing first the first step is get ourselves a configuration sender section for castle so this config section is saying allow us to have a element named castle and map that to the castle section handler and from lines 8 to 12 you can see we have our castle elements section and inside of it we have our components and it's inside this components block where we're going to define out all of our different mappings of from I invoice service to invoice service from I re invoice repository to invoice repository and that type of thing so the first one that we were just looking at back here in the form we want to say when I ask for I invoice service give me a type back and in our case that type should be a nude up invoice service so let's just go ahead and create this right now so we'll create a new component element the first thing that we want is a unique name for each component and in this case we'll call it invoice service the next step is to use this syntax that dotnet has of na fully qualified namespace followed by the class interface whatever type of object it is full so fully qualified namespace dot object name comma what assembly it's found in so here we're gonna have igloo coder dot dimecast ioc dot services and the interface we're looking for is i invoice service that's what we're asking for so the service is what we're asking for i invoice service and it'll be inside igloo coder dot dimecast dot i dot ioc so when we ask for the i invoice service give us back an invoice service so that's the basic one right there the service attribute is what am i going to ask for the type is what do you get returned from the object so now that we have this entry in here if we go back to form one we ask for this here we're going to say when i want an i invoice service give me this invoice service new this invoice service up so castle windsor is going to go and new it up and the only constructor we have is this one here on line 15 and it's a two parameter constructor so castle windsor is smart enough to say hey two two parameter constructor let me see if i can tell what i need to pass in there and it says first one i a type of i invoice repository let's look through my configuration and resolve that we don't have that entry inside of app config so we'll just go ahead and add that right now so we'll just do another new component we'll call this invoice repository and we want i invoice repository and it's in that assembly. So one thing to note here is that everything in this XML is case sensitive. If I were to do a lowercase i invoice repository at this point, like this, 
it would not resolve properly because the class name is actually uppercase invoice repository. So we need to make sure that we have everything case sensitive throughout it. So now we've got our second entry in here and if we go back to our invoice service when it's when we ask for I invoice service it's, and it's newing up the invoice service for us it can now appropriately look through its config and say I need an I invoice repository I know how to new up the invoice repository for that and it will pass in a new invoice repository to this it needs to do the same thing for this as well so we need to have a component entry for I translate invoice invoice listing saying what translator it should be using so we'll just go ahead and jump back and we'll do the same thing we'll do a new component and we'll call this invoice to invoice listing translator the namespace is going to be inside the translators namespace and what we're looking for as an interface is I translate with two generics. So the proper syntax in .NET is tick2 and then everything for the generic types goes inside square braces. So the tick is saying it's generic, the two is saying that there's two types in the generic and inside the square braces we define the two types that the interface is using. For those types they also go inside their own square braces separated by a comma. So the first one is going to be that we want to have it from invoice to invoice listing. So the first one is again fully qualified with its name all the way through and then comma what assembly do we find it in. So it's IgluCoder Dimecast IOC model invoice and it's found inside the IgluCoder Dimecast IOC assembly. The second one again is found inside of the same first three parts of the uh, the name and then we have DTO and then the name of it is actually invoice listing and it's found inside the same assembly so now we've defined the two generic types fully let's define the final what assembly do we find I translate in and let's say what do we get back when we ask for this generic I translate invoice to invoice listing well we get back the invoice to invoice listing translator so there's a lot of stuff going on here for the generics we ask for the generic and we need to define out to it all the different parts So we're saying here's the class that we want, what we ask for, I translate. It's a generic, takes two parameters. The first one is the invoice, can be found in the IOC, or iglucoder.dimecast IOC assembly. And we have this invoice listing as the second generic type in this interface. And we tell it what, we, uh, what assembly I translate can be found in. The problem with this is that all of this splitting up that I just did to put it onto four lines doesn't work. We need to have everything defined on one line. Uh, the white space makes a difference in this case. So we have to have it defined on one line. Immediately the readability goes down. So this is something that we're going to look at in the next episode, uh, or in a couple of episodes actually. How do we get the readability up? Another thing that you may be thinking right now, when I build my application, the bigger my application gets, the more realistic my application is to the, to the world of uh, business apps, the larger this components section here is going to be. We're going to have more and more entries. One of the things that we can do is just leave them all here in the app config or the web config. But that file, especially the web config one, is going to grow immensely what I like to do is split them out so I remove this block and start putting them into their own 
uh, into their own files and I split the files up. I'll have one file for services, one file for translators, one file for repositories, just so I have somewhere to know where I know I can go and get them. So the way you do that is inside Castle you can say a URI name and we could call it uh, we could call it Windsor repositories dot config do the same thing again we call it Windsor services dot config and the same thing again where we call it Windsor translators dot config so this allows us to keep the main app configure web config file very very small because we only have one entry per file type or type of object we're going to uh, resolve for and then we also we would then add these three files into our project and put those components these components here would get split out and put inside of each of those files nothing needs to change on our initialization over here in program this initialization here is still good enough it knows to go to the app config and find the castle block and it loads it up and it says oh I'm gonna go out and get stuff from these other places so it does that on its own just one way to minimize the amount of stuff that's in this file it doesn't solve the problem of the translator being generic and being very very long though so that's all we have for this episode. Uh, we'll be back in another episode and we'll look at some other stuff.